Welcome to lesson one. In this lesson, we're going to look at that overview section that often appears in the first few pages of many garment patterns. It talks about things like gauge and abbreviations that are used in the pattern, skill level, lots of other bits and pieces of information. Now, I often think it's easy to rush past the overview in your excitement to cast on and get started, but it's actually one of the more important parts of the pattern. So we're going to spend some time talking about how to interpret it. Now, I would also note that a shortened version of this overview section is something that you're likely to find on a designer's website or on a Ravelry pattern page. So in that case, it's a section that's intended to give you enough information to decide if the pattern's actually something that you want to knit, that you're interested in, something that you'll have the capacity and the skills to knit. So when I say overview, I'm talking about both of those sections to a certain extent. Now, the ones we're going to look at are the ones, the overview sections that are actually in a pattern. Now, after this lesson, you should feel confident deciphering the section of the pattern and deciding if a particular pattern is right for you. Now, this is the longest of the lessons, as there's a lot of ground to cover, but I've broken it down into several sections. So I hope you'll feel free to move through this and other lessons at a speed that's really comfortable to you. So let's begin with the Triscow pattern by Anna Dervout. I'm going to put the first page of the pattern up on your screen so that you can see what the sweater looks like. Now for many of us, this first page of the pattern, this kind of opening image, is the inspiration that draws us into a pattern. We like the fit or the styling. There's just something about the photo that makes us want to knit the garment. But the question is, how can you best interpret the pattern so that you can successfully recreate the garment in your own size? The answers are in the pattern. You just have to know where to look. So first off, the overview section. I'm going to put page two of this pattern up on the screen so that you can see that the designer has done a very nice job of laying out a lot of the important information that you'll need up front to be able to successfully knit this sweater. Now, most contemporary patterns will include very similar information in the overview section of their pattern. Things like size, recommended ease, gauge, the yarn that was used for the sample, the needle sizes, and the notions you'll need. But you have to remember that all of this information is really open to interpretation, and you'll need to make some careful choices in order to get the best outcome. One of the first things that I look at when I start reading a pattern is information about the sample size that I've seen on that front page or the cover photo. Now I can use this information to determine the fit and style of the sweater so that I can better replicate it in my own size. In the Triscow pattern, you can see that the designer has given you the sample version information, so we know which yarn was used for the sweater, including the colorway, we also know that it was knit in a size 90 centimeters with 10 centimeters of positive ease. Now, for those of you who use the standard measurement system of inches and feet rather than the metric system, I, I kind of try to go back and forth between the two, but it's tricky. This might not seem like helpful information, but remember, converting centimeters to inches and inches to centimeters is not too difficult if you have a smartphone or a computer. I do think it's important to sort of gain over time a basic working knowledge of both measurement systems because some patterns won't give you the conversion and being able to eyeball or ballpark a measurement can be a really useful skill. But if this is a skill that you're still learning or you don't particularly want to learn, totally understand, I've provided the conversion guide in the course materials. So for now, let's do a quick conversion for this sample size that we see for the Triscow pattern. There are a couple things that will help us with a quick conversion. First, knowing that there are about two and a half centimeters for every inch will help. And knowing something like 10 centimeters and four inches are about the same, because that's what you usually hear for a swatch size. I also just happen to know that 90 centimeters is about 36 inches for a bust size, because that's the size that I tend to knit my sweaters in. So what we know now is that the sample sweater being worn on the cover page is a 36 inch bust. And because it's being worn with four inches of positive ease, do a quick little mathematical subtraction there, we know the model has a size 32 inch bust. Now that gives you a sense of the relative ease and styling so that if you like the look of the sweater that you're seeing on the front page of this pattern, then you'll want to go with that full 10 centimeters or four inches of positive ease in your own sweater. But if you want to go with a more fitted sweater, then you would maybe reduce your ease and go for something along the lines of, um, you know, an inch or two of positive ease, which might mean three or four centimeters. And you can see up in the recommended ease section of this, this overview that the designer is actually recommending somewhere between three and 10 centimeters or an inch to four inches of positive ease. So once you have a sense of that range and you have a sense of what the sample 
uh, size is in terms of ease, then you can make your own decisions about the garment that you want to knit. Now what this information also tells us is that the pattern does not have ease built into the sizes. So if you're looking at the sizes section at the beginning of the overview, you need to note to yourself that none of those sizes have the recommended ease built into them. Instead, you'll have to do a little figuring here to figure out how much ease you want and then knit that size. So for example, if your bust is 34 inches and you want four inches of positive ease, you'd then want to knit the size 38 inch or 95 centimeter version in this pattern. We can also see from the sizing information that this is a size inclusive pattern, which means that it's gonna go from about a 32 inch bust up to a 62 inch bust. And that's great information to have so that you know whether or not this pattern is actually gonna work for you without a lot of extra work on your part and mathematical figuring. Now one of the next things I tend to look at in a pattern is the construction and the skill level recommended for the pattern. Often these things kind of go hand in hand and it's helpful to know if a sweater is knit from say the top down, the bottom up, or even side to side. <laughs> and it's really helpful to know if there's a lot of finishing involved. Things like seaming up the sides or picking up stitches for a collar. Often that information will be in the initial description of the pattern, but sometimes you need to look a little bit further into the overview to figure out what's going on with the sweater. In the case of the Trescau pattern, you're gonna find that information on page three. So let's look at it. At the top of the page, we see that Trescau is described as a cropped raglan sleeve jumper whose back is slightly longer than the front. And if we look a little bit further, we'll see the construction is top down so you'll be knitting the neck of the sweater first, then you're gonna work down toward the sleeves and the main body of the sweater. It also looks like there's a very little finishing work involved here, which means that when you knit the neck, if you begin up at the neck, you're not gonna to need to go back and pick up stitches for the collar. You might also note that the sleeve stitches are gonna be put on waist yarn and then worked later, so you're not having to pick those up either. Finally, you can see that the sweater is worked in stockinette and garter stitch without any special stitches or motifs. Now all of these design choices, I think really make this a beginner friendly pattern, uh, which the designer notes in the overview. And it's one of the reasons that I chose it as the kind of backbone of this class. I think it is the kind of sweater that would be very accessible to beginning knitters. Now advanced beginner, intermediate and expert patterns often include special stitches, potentially complex techniques, pattern motifs for cables and color work or lace. And whenever I look at the overview section of a pattern, I try to check to see whether or not the pattern motifs are charted or written. Now, like I said, the Triscow pattern doesn't have any motifs because it doesn't have any color work, cables, or lace. Again, a very beginner-friendly pattern. So let's switch over to that Namu pattern by Knit Boop for a minute, and I can show you what I mean about looking for these motifs to see if they're charted or written. Now, Namu is a cabled pullover pattern uh, and you can clearly see from the overview that the designer has made it clear that this pattern uses charted instructions only. So if you are a beginning knitter, this means you need to learn to use charts in order to access this pattern. But charts are not scary once you know how to read them. And in fact, I've included uh, in lesson five a little bit more information about how to manage charts. So we'll come back to the Namu pattern when we get to that lesson. For now, I just wanted to draw your attention to the fact that designers will often specify if their patterns include charted or written directions for those cable, color work, or lace motifs. Because this is a class largely for beginners and beginning pattern knitters, let's now move through a few other sections in the overview. I wanna focus on needles and notions for a moment. If you've been knitting for a long time, you likely have a pretty big stash of needles, <laughs> various kinds and sizes, double pointed, long straight needles, circular needles, maybe interchangeable needles, all in various sizes. If you have a lot of stash needles, then finding the right one for a particular pattern won't really be an issue. But if you're new to knitting and you haven't amassed a lot of needles yet, totally fine. <laughs> it's worth checking out which needles are called for in the pattern or recommended for the gauge size. That way you'll know if you need to buy or borrow some needles or if you can get by with what you might have around in your stash. The same thing goes for notions. Things like stitch markers, 
tapestry needles, scrap yarn. A lot of us have them lying around, but if you're new to knitting, you might need to acquire these. But before you run off and buy needles uh, that are called for in the pattern, you might want to swatch with the needles that are very close to that size that you already have on hand. If you can get gauge with that particular needle, you may not need to spend any extra money or time. So it's worth just checking the needles that you have to see how close they are to the size that's called for in the pattern. But wait, you say, what is gauge anyway? <laughs> if you're new to sweater patterns, you've likely heard other knitters talking about gauge and gauge swatches. Some people love them, some people hate them. But gauge is really important for sweater knitting in particular because it really helps determine what size the sweater is that you're gonna actually produce. So gauge is produced by a combination of a particular needle size and a particular yarn and a particular knitter. <laughs> All three of those things come together. So it's not just as simple as casting on with the yarn in the pattern and the needle that's recommended and automatically getting the right gauge. <laughs> You'll likely need to experiment with different size needles and even different yarn sometimes to be able to get a gauge that's close or as close as possible to the gauge of the pattern. And for that reason, I always think of that needle section as a kind of recommendation. It's a great place to start. And in this case, you might be swatching with US six or four millimeter needles as are called for in the pattern and just see what kind of gauge you produce. You may need to go up a needle size or down a needle size in order to get gauge. We'll spend some more time on gauge in the next lesson. So set it aside for now, just have it kind of be percolating in your brain. Now, as I mentioned, your gauge is going to be determined by your needles, your yarn, and you. So let's take a look at the yarn section of this pattern. Here, the designer has used a DK weight yarn. Again, if you're new to knitting, things like yarn weights might strike you as kind of confusing at first. And believe me, a lot of us experienced knitters are still confused by yarn weights because they don't really make a whole lot of sense in terms of naming. We have things like lace and fingering, DK, worsted, Aran. As you get some more experience as a knitter, you'll have a better intrinsic kind of feel for what yarn weights might mean for a pattern. But for now, it's helpful to know that a DK weight yarn is heavier than a fingering weight and lighter than a worsted weight. We also know that the gray sample that was on the cover of this pattern was knit in Eden Cottage yarns and that the pink version that's pictured later in the pattern was knit in a combination of fingering and lace weight yarn held together to achieve a DK weight yarn. Now, a lot of beginning knitters will use the yarn that's specified in the pattern. So for example, the simplest thing to do would be to get some Eden Cottage yarn in the Hayden DK weight and knit the sweater in that yarn. But Pattern yarn is not always available, it's not always affordable, so it's good to know that looking at the yarn section of a pattern can actually just give us lots of information that we could use if we wanted to swap out our yarn for a different yarn for this sweater. I talk about this in another course on yarn substitution and playing with gauge. But for now, I'll give you the short version, just in case you can't get Eden Cottage yarn for your sweater. The best thing to do would be to look at the Eden Cottage yarn website and figure out what the yarn construction and composition is for the Hayden DK. If you can find a yarn that's a good match, then you just substitute it with that yarn. There's also a great website called Yarn Sub that can help walk you through the process and give you actual um, good substitutes for something like the Hayden DK for Eden Cottage yarns. Now that we've looked at a lot of the information that you'll find in the overview section of the pattern, let's take a look at the section that often comes next, which is abbreviations and techniques. Now this section will often give you a good idea of how complicated the pattern is, whether in the pattern includes special stitches and what the designer's expectations are for things like increases or decreases, uh, for which there are usually a lot of different techniques. Like you can increase in a pattern a number of different ways or decrease a number of different ways and you'll kind of get a sense of what the designer wants to do for this particular garment. In the case of the Triscow pattern, which I've popped on the screen again here, we can see that we'll need to work German short rows, but there's also a video tutorial to help us out. That's awesome. And the designer is gonna be using the make one increase and several different decreases from knit two together to slip slip knit to um, passing slip stitch stitches over. So if you're unfamiliar with any of these techniques, now's the time to check out some helpful YouTube tutorials or go to some of your favorite knitting books before you begin the pattern and get to a point where you need to make an increase or a decrease and you're at a loss for how to do such a thing. 
The other really important thing about the abbreviation section and the technique section is that it's basically your key or your code breaker for the rest of the pattern. Many designers will use similar abbreviations, but not everyone uses the same abbreviations. So each pattern might have abbreviations that are specific to it. In other words, this abbreviations and technique section is going to be really important for reading and decoding the rest of this pattern. If you're unfamiliar with some of the basic abbreviations such as casting on or binding off, right side versus wrong side, placing a marker or slipping a marker, these are also things you might want to go to a beginning knitting book or a tutorial to figure out before you begin the pattern. Once you've read through the overview of a pattern, you have a lot of information about how the designer imagined that you might be knitting this sweater. But there are a few other key pieces of the pattern to examine before we actually pick up our knitting needles. So let's go on to lesson two and look at gauge to see what we can learn.